Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of our Dungeon Boss Is It Worth It series. It is no surprise that uh, today we're going to be talking about Rayla the Lightbringer. And what we're going to be looking at today is basically, is this someone that you're going to want to pursue in any way, shape, or form as far as uh, basically bang for your buck? When I'm looking at her right now in terms of just sheer amount of resources needed to get her to where you want her to be it's looking uh, at first glance like this is not going to really be worth it uh, at all in my opinion uh, as far as uh, comparison to when i used to play uh, obviously i've been around uh, a long time i've seen a lot of hero releases but i've missed the last few so i don't know how far they took the actual hero calendar thing if that's something that uh, continued all the way up until now or if the last few heroes after i left um, were kind of the end of the hero calendar but uh, this brings me back to uh, when gore tusk was released when gore tusk was released they had some uh, in-game offers in the shop that basically said if you purchase this and then do enough stuff through the quest you basically get enough tokens to exactly get him to six star now, i think a lot of people actually did that and and basically they were you know making a heck of a bunch of sales obviously i saw a lot of uh, gortas at six stars myself included and just doing the hero calendar in general it was very easy for people with minimal effort to get four star heroes and uh, even five star heroes and i think uh, obviously they the upper brass caught wind of that and it obviously uh, i don't know if it under undermined the point of the game at all but basically when i'm looking at the release of rayla here in terms of getting her to six stars like instantly today yesterday it's just downright impossible um, unless you're throwing just oodles amount of cash and gems at this thing so let me show you where i'm at right now so i think when i first um kind of came back i showed you my currency in terms of where i was with uh um my summons so i'm down to my last 55 i did um a bunch of summons yesterday to coincide with the particular uh, quest on there that said do three heroic summons and do that ten times. So I did three times tens and I just did um, eight more of them now. So I did a total of eleven ten times summons to get us to where I'm at right now. So if you want to put that in perspective, if you want to get her to the point where just doing the first ascension you have to do, if you have decent amount of luck, you have to do 11 times 10 summons. That got me to exactly the 70 that's required to get to the um, third star. So now that I've done that, uh, I can do my first ascension, and I can also show you the requirements for the second ascension. I think having those two things in play there, knowing what it's going to cost you to ascend her the second time, may either encourage you or deter you to actually seek her out any further. And keep in mind that I need, now need um, 100 tokens and then 150 for the um, second ascension if you're doing the math on here that's 250 tokens it's way more than i've gotten so far and that took me 110 summons basically uh, if you want to do the math on that um, be my guess but I'm, I'm basically telling you that's going to be a lot of summons especially if you don't have a lot of them banked that's where the gems and stuff are going to come into play now coincidentally um, I was offered, there was an offer that came up on my homepage, and it's gone now because it expired. Uh, I wasn't expecting to expire so soon. But uh, even that, it was a 100 US dollar purchase, and even that only offered 50 Rayla tokens. It offered a bunch of extra summons. I think it was um, maybe like 100 summons or 30 summons, I don't really know. And then it was like 5,000 gems, but only 50 tokens. And I'm thinking, 50 tokens if I get that now that puts me at 50 out of 100 I still need to do probably a good solid 100 summons in order to get that uh, fourth star that's not even going into the fifth star so the way that I see this going is ultimately maybe some sort of a, a balancing act in terms of how they wanted to pursue with the game so really what it's going to amount to now is people not necessarily getting these new heroes and maxing them out instantly but more so of a longer game like a sort of race to see who gets them first uh, aside from the few people that e even the whales if they throw money at this thing you're not just buying a, a 99 dollar purchase and and there you go the amount of money that you're gonna have to throw on it at this hero to get her six stars instantly is way more than 100 us dollars i'm thinking it's going to be closer to about 500 us 
dollars um, if I'm doing the math correctly. You can correct me if I'm wrong there, but uh, the amount of dollars, unless you can guarantee actual uh, physical tokens with some sort of a purchase, this um, I've had several of my um, times 10 go through without a single Rayla token come back. So that times 10 didn't guarantee her any any tokens. So there were a couple that I also got two sets of her tokens in, in one times 10 pull, but uh, the fact that it's a gamble uh, tells me alone that it's likely going to be, if you're buying just uh, summons or just gems to get summons, uh, you're looking at well over $100. I, I won't say it's going to be $500, but it's going to be a couple hundred dollars to get this. Um, so there will be some whales that maybe want to go out and do that sort of purchase, but I think the end game here is mostly to balance things out. We'll have some people gaining tokens towards Rayla, and then next month we'll have whatever Shayla we'll just make that up and then she'll be the new one and so we'll be gradually gaining tokens kind of like it was in the very beginning days of the game before runes and things like that where really the stars and stuff actually did matter um, they kind of matter again now but uh, uh, it's always been overshadowed by the way that people are able to bank some of the rewards that they get from high-end guild events and basically get uh, super powered heroes right away so I don't blame them for that plus it's a, a heck of a financial model if you're not really even selling anything you're just selling a gamble um, more power to them they'll probably drive away uh, customers and players alike but uh, for the most part uh, you can't blame them for trying to make money that's the the mobile environment Anyways, enough of my editorial rant here. Let's actually look at what she brings to the table and what her um, um, abilities and ascension costs are. I'm not going to go into uh, the abilities too much. I just like to see them more so on this screen rather than on that main screen where it just gives a wall of text. I like to see the little icons and see how many of these things uh, coincide together as well as see the other stats along with it. So uh, I'm not going to bother leveling her up right now because to be honest, I'm, I'm not convinced that I'm going to be using her or that I even really will be able to. Um, with her only being three stars, I could probably uh, throw some really great runes on her and make her somewhat competitive. But the, the PvP landscape leads me to believe that um, unless some of these abilities are really hardcore, I just don't see her surviving much against the, the teams that are out there. There's some really, really hard hitters that I've run into. Uh, I myself have lost to people that were several levels below me and lower in rune power just because of mechanics. You know, the multiple attacks from barbarians or, um, you know, this or that. So, um Anyways, her ascension costs uh, looks like this for the first ascension. It is five celestials and two celestials, so it's seven total. It's uh, pretty much on par with most uh, high-end heroes as far as that first ascension. 20 and 30 for those other regular evos. Not too big of a deal there. So this particular first ascension unlocks three little passives here. We got the commanding presence. Um, this one here is decent it's a decent enough skill the allies gain uh, one energy i like that there's a different one that i wanted to to point out though um, other allied range physical taps uh, attacks have a chance to blind i don't really know how that's gonna play a part uh, i don't use a lot of range and then take uh, 25 percent reduced damage from basic and epics not a, not a big deal, but it's also nice to have a little bit of extra defense. Um, but let's go ahead and ascend her and see what the um, second ascension is going to cost. Character model, somewhat cool. Nothing, you know, too great. It's basically a yellow Nimriel for the most part. I like the eye patch, but, um, you know, I like the actual character art better than the character model. Um, second Ascension is really, um, looks like it's pretty heavy on the actual regular Evos and not so much on the Celestials. Um, it's also not one of those ones that I think is really awful to get. The Shadow, I think, is one that was a little bit, it's not quite the Bushido, but I know one of these purple ones, I, I believe it is the Shadow one that can be a little bit, uh, um, tough to find. Um, I'll see what I have for mine, but then we have the Valkyrie, I think that one's pretty easy to get. Shadow Evo, I have 20 of them. If you look at my stock, it's on the lower side of any of the Evos that I have. So this is definitely one of those ones that doesn't come around as often. Uh, it may not be the worst. Like I said, it's not a Bushido. That guy's at 10. He's my lowest one just because it just does not happen very often. So um, when we look at her, 
Her current abilities and stats, let's just look at the stats quick. So after one ascension, she has the following. This is the Elven Grace. Um, that's a pretty cool elf mechanic. I, I like that you do double damage to flying. There's uh, you know a litany of different uh, mechanics like that for different types of heroes. So call it the, you know, I don't even know what to call it, the flying killer type thing. Um, she's fast. I like that. And then... This is the one we covered before. So what I wanted to actually point out, though, is in the, the next ascension is this guy here. Uh, if you just take a moment to read this here, if you haven't read it through the, um, the actual character page or on the, the main screen, uh, this here looks like it's probably going to be the reason why she's going to end up being a good hero. Um, so I don't really know how this is going to work when we have this follow-up with the, the similar uh, attack because... Uh, I haven't seen it in action yet. So if you are one of the few people that actually have this as a, uh, you know, a, a five-star hero and you've seen this in action, definitely leave a comment and tell us exactly how it works because it looks like it is going to be quite the, the ability. Um, so if there's any reason to rush this hero to five stars is to get this ability here. I've never seen anything like it, uh, aside from maybe the, the father-son thing that, uh, that, uh, what the hell is his name? Rogar and, and Dagon do. Uh, but even that, it just hasn't really panned out. So I'm, I'm curious to see how this works, but I'll be honest, I don't think I'm going to be able to demonstrate this for quite some time because I just, I don't have the heroic summons to throw at this girl to get another 100, 100 let's see, 250 tokens. It's just not going to happen, I'm afraid. So like I said, if you have um, the ability to tell us what this does or show us, I'm all for it. Uh, I would love to know. Anyways, as far as her abilities go, the Hail of Arrows, it's just a, a basic attack for the most part. I didn't find anything really amazing about this. It's her quote-unquote signature, which basically means it's for free. But, I mean, the off-balance, don't really care about that too much. Um, unless you're going against, uh, you know, I don't know. If you're going against Rangers, off-balance is, is always nice. Uh, or if you have Rangers, rather, sorry. Um, purging all the buffs uh, could be a nice thing, being that she is fast. Uh, the only downside is, I guess, um, if she's going to go first, how many buffs are they actually going to have? Are you going to save this? That's one of those things where, uh, I guess, repeated attempts in PvP to see how she's going to pan out will ultimately uh, dictate how great this is going to be. I picture this more as a debuff skill than any type of attack. I'm guessing the attack is going to be negligible. But an AoE debuff is nice, especially if it purges all buffs. Um, but there are a couple things out there, I think, that are not buffs, but are more like traits uh, that can't be purged. So we do have to watch for that. There might be a few people that sneak through the cracks. Uh, the commanding presence. So spirit attack and chance to paralyze. Don't really care too much about uh, paralysis. The gain plus one energy is going to be nice uh, because she is fast. This is going to be the equivalent of maybe an extra festive rune. Uh, so depending who you put after her, gaining one energy could be uh, all the difference that you need. Now keep in mind that if you use her first, especially in PvP attack, um, one, defender is going to go first. Two, then you're going to go then another defender is going to go to uh, unless your next person is a fast and there's a normal so there's obviously going to be a little bit of balance there so i like that it's only one energy and not two i think that would have maybe heavily skewed towards attacking we would have been back into a, a zen kozar phase where we're basically dealing with somebody who can whip out uh, an attack that they're not supposed to right uh, from the beginning the last ability is that uh, basically the jump shot. I actually liked the sound of this when I first read it. So all ranged allies attack the same target. If you're using a heavy range uh, team, great. My guess is if you have a caster and somebody like Solaris, you get two free ones out of there. Uh, but most of my teams are still going to have uh, the big hitters like uh, Agnon or Hopper. Um, even Coral sometimes or Shade. Shade I don't think is actually technically ranged. I can't remember uh, off the top of my head. Um, but on top of that, the um, the invulnerable, and it starts powered. So you can use this as a uh, opposite to that first ability. Uh, like I said, if they don't have debuffs, you may not want to waste that first ability. So to wrap this uh, particular video up, uh, in terms of is it worth it, 
I think her as a hero, she's going to be uh, very good in the long run, but in the short run, uh, unless you have a way to get uh, tokens, which right now the only way that you're going to get a ton of tokens are likely going to be if you are one of uh, these people here. If you can get uh, secure some of these from the, the players or even from the guild, if you can nail down some of these um, tokens here, even that, it's not very many of them, so they're not, they're not giving her away by any means at all. Um, it's going to be tough to get her uh, into a really strong position. Unless uh, the runes really outpace the stars, she's going to be an expensive one to do. So it'll be interesting to see if this is the financial model that they're using for all hero releases at this point, in which case I would expect that uh, we're looking at a, a long game here, and then once she goes out a feature and she drops down to 3% instead of 6%, um, it could be months and months and months even before you get that next star. So... Um, aside from any type of uh, bonus features where you're going to get a bunch of tokens, um, it's going to be uh, a tough call. At the moment, uh, just by pure expense, I'm going to say it's probably not worth it for you to pour too much in. If you have a lot of summons saved up, it may not be a bad idea to try and do a hundred of them like I did. Um, but you're going to blow through your, your summons very, very quickly. And even then, it's not going to be guaranteed to get you to that uh, first ascension. Uh, again, I'm I'm not 100% uh, sold on even using her at just a single ascension. I'll probably uh, throw some runes on her and just run her through a dungeon or so because I'm guessing that uh, there's going to be some quests that kind of uh, you know feature her a little bit. Obviously, the PvP quest now that says use an elf and a warrior. Uh, she's an elf warrior, so that would be instead of having to use two separate people, you can use just her. But I don't know that that's going to work uh, too well for me right now. So. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, we will see you again next time, and uh, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please show your continued support by hitting that like button, and be sure to check out both my YouTube channels for new content all the time. And always remember, peace is a lie, there's only passion. We'll see you next time.